is moving through the matrix. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> what, as the the resident hobo uh, hippie AI technician, <laughs> I would expect no less. You know, I'm I'm sure this is what people expect from an AI technician. I mean, if <laughs> if your AI technician doesn't, you know, ride the rails like actual train cars, is he do even? You, do you? Oh, he has. Yeah. Now let's see where is. There's that. So, yeah, the streams do be streaming. I had to verify this shit because, you know, I was concerned. Oh, yeah. Shout out to those watching live. I haven't even started the show yet. You get a little sneak peek of the inner workings. <laughs> right. Should be used to it right now if they're this early. I haven't configured any of this stuff to make our stream stable. So here's holding oh, out for fine. the best. Ah, stability. We're on par with your Nothing favorite life. ex-girlfriend, so we're, we're good to go. Nothing in life is truly stable. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, that that makes sense. Mm. Everything is in flux constantly. I like that word. Flux? Yeah. The flux capacitor, get, you know? Gotta get the flux capacitor. Shit, exactly I should. What I was thinking. If I'm gonna bring back <laughs> Describeify, flux is the word to go with. That's it, right there. Flux. I mean, why not? Beats the shit out of pussy fart. Who moderates this chat? What are you guys doing in chat here? Y'all crazy. Mm. Reviving, man. What are you doing? Drinking on stream because, like, I had all my shit deleted destroyed i had to re uh, i had to reassemble the setups for all of our stuff from the ground up you know which is to that say is is. yeah <laughs> i i think i've earned this one looks like a ramuna no no it's just a some mics oh know? those are good but uh, yeah ah, mics are pretty good yeah. Old I people criticize me the, heavily uh, for drinking the these. Mm. I mean, they're they're a tasteful, you know. Drink. Are you allowed? For, uh, are we allowed to drink on stream? <laughs> I mean, we're all adults, right? I mean, I'm you're not a... like taking a shot for. Dude, I'm just three eight-year-olds in a trench coat. I don't know what you're talking about. People we'll flashing the labels or anything. We're not sponsored. Uh, you know, hey, Mike's sponsor us. <laughs> Imagine. Dude, if Mike's decided to be the official alcoholic beverage of D&D &D tables everywhere, that Shout might be onto to something. Jack Daniels cocktails. I'm a big fan. <laughs> that might be a, a tad much. But I think knocking back a few light drinks is perfectly fine at a table as long as everyone does it met in a, like a measured fashion. And if yeah, anyone brings like a, beer. you know, like a, a beer that no one likes, then like kind of fuck off, dude. Like I, I appreciate the thought and the effort, but like, you know, you, you need something workable for everybody at the table. It, it's a, you know, just kind of how it goes. I don't know how many tables actually drink when they're playing, but like, you know, the classic uh, concept of the a beer until the lich goes and kills everybody. Uh, it, it was a time, my friend. It was a time. <laughs> a very well, different speaking time. time. <laughs> speaking of time, I think now will be a good time to start the show. And maybe I can get my wife to stop snoring in the background. That'd, that'd be cool. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Yeah, good luck with that. You didn't hear it too, so <laughs> Well,
welcome to D- D- Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you Dungeons, Monsters, News, Home Brews, and uh, hopefully a few extra brews if you're lucky uh, to your table. How are y'all doing tonight? I am your host, Orion. I'm your host, Sam. Welcome back. Welcome back. And I'm just here. Yeah, we have a, a scruffy looking guest in uh, with us tonight, and I was that a bird I saw earlier. Do we have a bird in studio? Like any good pirate, <laughs> yeah, you got to have the bird on the shoulder. Naturally, naturally, he, he introduces said, the bird. Yeah, a little little bird named Sprout. <laughs> like that. Sprout doesn't like to. Uh come out um, on camera because it's just, way too comfy i love that he's just like up there uh, back in the nest yeah nesting in your hair and beard right next to your mic like it's nothing hiding away in the little the microphone to like stand on this is adorable <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, audio only listeners i am I am this sorry that you get to not see this adorable little what what breed of bird is that it's got a parakeet, right? Uh, no, it's actually, um, what the hell are they called? I keep wanting to say conures because I want to get a conure. They're, they're much larger. But definitely um, a reason to uh, be a visual watcher. Sometimes this we is, animals. This is a paralet. <laughs> a paralet. Ah, paralet. They are not really known for being friendly, but this one was, uh, like, raised by hand. Nice. Which you goes know what? a little bit further That's... than just being hand-fed. Uh, I would say so. I mean, as the nerd militia's resident druid, uh, I feel like you're really uh, fitting the part right here. Yeah, this is like what they would consider a pocket parrot. Like <laughs> tiny, <laughs> tiny little representation <laughs> of a parrot. Dude, I... They're known for being <laughs> totally fearless. That's hilarious to me because... On Facebook, since high school, I've had the language set to Pirate English. Now, Pirate English, it will just kind of like change everything to a kind of a piratey tone. And when it refers to a phone or, in Pirate English, it I calls didn't know it... I was still on there. Uh, I think they removed it, but like my account fell through the cracks. Because I looked through the settings and I can't find the setting for it, so I never changed it. Uh Someone I can correct having it on yeah. for a while. Uh, someone years can correct me if I was ago. wrong, but I never changed it; just left it. And it refers to a cell phone as a pocket parrot. That makes oh, sense. that's great! That makes a lot that of sense. That is hilarious. <laughs> I can definitely see it. Honestly, I like little birds because they're always just like, uh, "Hey, let, let's just hang out," you know, uh, assuming that they're chill enough to hang out. See, I'm not really like a bird guy. I'm more of like a ferret in the pocket, lizard on the shoulder, you know. Ferrets are so fun. I've always, always, always wanted a ferret. I feel that. Like, when I first started playing D&D, whenever I'd make a familiar, I'd always have the familiar be like some kind of ferret or a weasel that would drape itself around the char- my character's neck like a scarf. <laughs> exactly. Because it's just... That's the- why I love otters and arc. Exactly. Like just the, the fantasy of having thing. this little furry buddy hang out on the shoulders, uh, just kind of wrapped Don't around want. all the time. Or maybe like a little sleeve ferret. Like, whatcha? Probably like to sleeves. survive the cold. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. They got a snake up to survive. that's like cold up in your neck. Hell yeah. Yeah, like last campaign, we had our ranger with his uh, constrictor snake, Sheila. Rest in peace, Sheila. You did not deserve to be destroyed by an inter- intellect devourer. <laughs> yeah, that was didn't have much intellect to take. <laughs> it really didn't, because it was a snake. And then our ranger had the sad moment of having to kill his snake. It was a powerful moment. I, as the DM, did not want it to happen because th- the snake had kind of grown on me too. It's like uh, you it's knew weird. What you were doing. It's weird as a DM sometimes when you're running a game for your players and you grow like kind of emotionally attached to some of the uh, things that they got going on. And they're just like, the dice fall where they may and these creatures are going to make these decisions. And like, 
if the That's closest... how I felt about Stonk in our Grim Hollows campaign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can be rough sometimes, you know? Oh, breaking up a little bit there. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, that's not just me. You're breaking up a little bit there, all right? Yeah. I'm sort uh, a little out of sync with the Discord, it looks like. Oh, okay. So it's probably just some kind of weird internet uh, screw up on my part. I don't know necessarily hmm. if there's anything I can do to fix that. I, w I would hope so. It says my... It's through clear right now, but a couple times it did hmm. get all... That's, that's strange. Stretched out and broken. Well, hopefully it will go through for the, the rest of the episode. A anything that I could possibly hmm. do to reduce the strain on the connection would be awesome. So we'll see where that goes. So, yeah. Forrest, why don't you... Uh, as a friend of the show, uh, some of our listeners might be familiar with you, but why don't you uh, tell everyone a little bit about what you do? Well, I would say I'm a dilettante of everything that I get myself involved in, but I do like to mess around with machine learning stuff of all sorts nowadays because I've always just been like a computer graphic artist and messing around with all the different things you can do with a home computer. So right. I messed around and got myself an expensive machine and that's helped me uh, do a lot of cool things. I've done some cool stuff in the server and the nerd militia Yeah, made yeah. some bots and hosted them and introduced people to different AI tools that they can uh, enhance their, whatever they're doing already with. Yeah, you D &D did tools, yeah. image tools, that type of stuff. Yeah, the AI upscaling was very helpful to our players that could only do like hand drawings. And it's like, you want to upload something and, and have it become like a digital art. And that's where AI upscaling comes in handy. Like a lot of people yeah. shit on AI in general. And like, uh, I understand the arguments both for and against. And it, it's weird for me just being kind of in the middle of the road. I want to see where things play out over the long run because I don't really necessarily think it's my place to take a ethical stance on these things because new technology is new technology. It's going to be what it's going to be. So only time will tell as far as my opinion. Like I, I try to make myself removed from these things. But it seems like uh, I personally enjoy like taking a piece of character art that I've created throwing it into the machine and kind of seeing what pops out the other side, you know, uh, mm -hmm. making up for the, the skills that I lack and turning it into something that looks good. I always found that oh, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, definitely when it comes to the artistic stuff with it, um, the more that you do have as, as human input, uh, especially to start out with like a, a drawing and a sketch like that really, really, it changes the whole process. You know, it, it makes it so much more of a artistic endeavor. Yeah. Um, cause you're not just like running it with a text description, you know, you've like really, you've gone as far as to describe spatially, like exactly where and how you want things. Mm -hmm. in your drawing and then that like translates into what it's able to to morph that into yeah i feel like a lot of people give you know ai like shit for just being like a prompt but the prompts are like i don't know i feel like this is important as a drawing prompt you know what i mean like someone who does the art physically is still doing the same kind of artistic labor that you'd be doing digitally yeah oh hey we uh, yeah, I think that yeah. those uh, uh, similarities will eventually shine more than the differences, um, especially with, with different artists yeah. using the tools and it being such a different experience than the kind of gimmicky, like, one shot, like, you put the prompt in and it spits out an image. Usually, yeah, like, that, that could be really fantastic for, like, memes. It could be really fantastic for just mm -hmm. being fun and hilarious and stuff. But everybody knows that you can't trust that output, like, right. worth a damn to be, like, a final a final work of any kind, you know? Absolutely. It wouldn't be, like, viable as mm. a commercial, you know, piece yeah. of 
anything. On a side note, I'm going to shout out to uh, Roar Tasha 23 out there saying, hi, how you doing? I think we're doing all right. Uh, any uh, yeah. any viewers that have been following us for a while will notice, if they're perceptive, that the fonts and uh, there's some mild changes in the overlay as I had to rebuild it today. <laughs> oh, that was okay. Well, I had, I, to we reset ev- I had to reset everything this past week. <laughs> Such a pain. I know. I hope the uh, the campaign is able to... Get on the move again with no pressure to Dude, you. Dude, I will throw an entire day into fixing that. Well, we've had, what, three sessions now kind of fizzle, unfortunately? Uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of things happen. And, and like, last week was just really unfortunate because all the technology failed. <laughs> uh, I'm sure other yeah, DMs can, uh, can relate to that. Yeah, I mean, maybe if we have anyone out there listening or watching who is familiar with Foundry, could give you some tips. You know what? That'd be a fantastic idea. As it stands, Sam, uh, what do you got going on for the Monster of the Week? Ooh, okay. So today, I went to some of my friends and I asked them for, you know, some suggestions. What kind of creatures do they like? What kind of monster tropes, you know? And one of my close friends... Went into a little bit of detail about uh, the things that, you know, lurk on the other side and that try to cross through, through, you know, certain, certain means. Yeah. So that's kind of what I took and did some research. I found something that I feel like we all kind of know about, but maybe not really. So here's what I got. All right. So where do I want to start here? So, in Western urban myths and legends, this creature is found in many, many horror outlets through the ages. Perhaps the most known is the tale of the summoning of Bloody Mary. Oh, okay. In so the second and third meant. edition. <laughs> <laughs> this is a yeah. classic. In the second and third edition D&D, the Fetch were deadly creatures that dwelt in the abyss and access the prime material planes through mirrors and other reflective surfaces. Um, before I get into the description here, I got a little bit of uh, interesting lore. Stop, Freya. That's, so in, I, I cannot drink that. In Irish and British folklore, a doppelganger and a fetch are similar enough to be one and the same. A spirit, double, or an apparition. Sometimes it is referred to as a wraith. <laughs> it can be an apparition or a vision of the person of whose death is being prophesied in almost every detail but appears as a ghostly shadowy figure or in many cases a direct reflection and I feel like we're all fairly familiar with what a doppelganger is but here's a quick uh, quick refresher a doppelganger is a biologically unrelated lookalike or double of a living person in fiction and mythology a doppelganger is often portrayed as a ghostly or paranormal phenomenon and usually seen as a harbinger of bad luck all right all right, all right. so we so <laughs> I was kind of surprised by how many cultures this is kind of hit so we have Irish and British already. You know, we have the Western, yeah. Mithern, I know, modernization of that. And then in Norse mythology, we have another no. similar kind of creature. So I'm not really sure how to say this specifically. Correct me if I'm wrong. A philgia is a supernatural being or spirit which accompanies a person in connection to their fate or fortune. The word filgia means to accompany, similar to that of the fetch in Irish folklore. It can also mean afterbirth of a child, meaning that the afterbirth and the filgia are one and connected. In some instances, the filgia can take on the form of the animal that shows itself when a baby is born, or as the creature that eats the afterbirth. In some literature and sagas, a filgia can take the form of mice, dogs, foxes, cats, birds of prey, or carrion eaters, because these were the animals that would typically eat the afterbirth. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, damn. A bit, damn. Of a, bit of a weird angle to take for folklore. 
I know, right? It's just like I, I was reading, you know, the mythologies and stuff, and I'm like, oh man, this is where this is what they believe. That the, you know, Norse mythology is very kind of runs oh, deep. Up. Yeah, yeah, it just runs deep. <laughs> Damn. Uh, someone's gonna have to let me know if I need to run extra noise suppression because, like, it seems like the stuff that I run for OBS versus uh, the separate stuff for the Libsyn, like, it seems to be picking up a lot more of my wife snoring in the background. I'm just like, uh, I mean, I don't, uh, well, I don't hear me, anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I, your, your sound sounds awesome, honestly. Yeah, uh, hmm. there might. I, just be like the faintest bit of like yeah. background noise only yeah, here and there. Isn't coming through the lips and uh, you're so yeah. crisp and clear that it doesn't even like register on the same level. So yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just like if you're, looking if at you're the seeing it come up. Then hey, I'm seeing like the audio so levels. It is a little them. hard to. That's weird. Right. Yeah. You can see that. You can probably see it, but it, like honestly, it can't be heard. Very... I mean, I'm wearing headphones, so like. You'd yeah. have to be listening real hard. <laughs> but, I mean, if anyone else can hear it, you know, please let us know. Uh, yeah, getting into the description here. You can imagine it's a little hard to describe a creature that is uh, pretty much a doppelganger, right? So, when a creature stares into a reflective surface, and it is met, or it has met the gaze of a fetch staring back, the fetch would take on the appearance of its chosen victim, but resembled a gravely pair and careworn version of them, with dull, lifeless eyes. If a fetch witnessed several creatures throughout the mirror, it took on the image of the individual closest to the reflective surface. If there was no such individual, a fetch took on the appearance of a random individual in the group. Hmm. The prey's height sh- limited the shape-shifting ability. A fetch can never take on a shape shorter than 4 feet, 1.2 meters, nor taller than seven feet, two point one meters. Okay. In their natural state, a fetch look like a corporeal, featureless shadow. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, so it's like a cursed ditto. Yeah, that's uh, so weird. Mm. I, I could have sworn that I've uh, heard. That's kind of where I was like. It kind of sounds like some kind of SCP uh, creepy pasta. I mean, it probably is. I mean, it's definitely very common in creepypasta, you know. I mean, as a kid, we all heard the say Bloody Mary a certain number of times in the dark, you know. And, you know, that kind of gave me the idea that, like, things like this or things like Bloody Mary, for example, give me, like, a very fey vibe in the sense of, like, you have to invite them in. You You have to give them, like, some kind of permission. Yeah, there's like mm. rules Where and regulations this creature, there. It's, it's permission would be like you making eye contact. Yeah. And it's like, oh, cool, I'm taking your form now. That, that <laughs> makes sense. I mean, like, when it comes to Faye, it's, it's like the classic trope of, hey, mm-hmm. what's your name? Oh, oh, hi, my name's Steve. Right. And then it's like, <laughs> yoink. <laughs> yoink. <laughs> and it, exactly. It's just like, yeah. oh, what? I, I can't say my name. What's my name? But what's interesting about these creatures are, is they are from the abyss, right? So they're not fey at all. Ah, they're so it's like technically a technically outer planar entities, hmm. like a uh, like a devil, yeah. eldritch. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, more more eldritch, like living in the in the in betweens. You know what I mean? Like ah, they slip through the cracks. Yeah, exactly. I read this, like, tweet the other day, and it was, like, I had a dream that this lady was walking this, like, demonic-looking dog or whatever, and then this old lady is, like, what breed is he? Oh, I saw that. Eldritch. (laughs) And then he's, like, what is your name? And a coin, like, comes out of a slot (laughs) on his forehead, and the woman's, like, says her name, and then he just, like, starts growing flesh. Yeah, she's, like, oh, no, don't do that. He starts growing flesh. He's usually like very sweet. Withers away into a husk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that kind of thing. He's usually not like this. You don't just be giving your names the random entities. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's where the Woman concept of better. true names comes from. Exactly. Yeah, and the power and names and stuff like that. Yeah, like I've heard so many magic systems where like the magic system is revolves around true names, and that, mm-hmm. you know that might be a fun concept to toy with as a DM, like. 
You, I mean, I personally, I always kind of do. I, I try to have the belief that, you know, with magic comes those kind of laws, you know. Hmm. Creature of sufficient power could set, you know, a law or a rule for their kind of domain. You know? Hmm. I don't know. I could see it. But, that's a, so that's a fair going on to the ecology and the lore here. Yeah, I mean, I would think so. You know, influence over magic is influence over the world and your will. Mm. So, the fetch could enter the prime material plane through any big reflective surface, like pools of water, polished silver trays, or mirrors. Or as long as the surface was big enough to pass through, it could not enter the material plane until they met the gaze of their intended prey. They radiated no body heat, remained cold to the touch, and did not eat or breathe. Fetch dragged the prey through the reflective surface into the abyss after the target was defeated. There, the unfortunate victim was transformed into a new fetch. If the mirror from which a fetch emerged was destroyed, the creature needed to find another suitable reflective surface to return to the abyss with or without its prey. If a fetch was unable to return to the abyss within 24 hours from entering the prime material, they started weakening and eventually were destroyed. Thankfully for all good intelligent inhabitants of the prime material plane, Fetch rarely were able to find the reflective surface big enough and a victim making them an uncommon sight. Hmm, interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, getting into the little bit of history in the Forgotten Realms on the Fetch. The existence of Fetch were widely known in the nation of Termish in the Vilhan Reach. Many knew an unsettling termite song about these dangerous abyssal stalkers. Because of the fetch, large mirrors were outlawed in the city. I personally could not find uh, this termite song, but if you know it or you know where to find it, let us know. It took uh, maybe like 20, 30 minutes looking for it, and I couldn't really find it. I don't know. But getting into the stats and abilities here. Now, in the uh, Forgotten Realms, they are a second edition and third edition, you know, creature. But I was able to find the fifth SRD for these, so I was able to get kind of a general stat block. All right. So we got the strength of an eight, dexterity at a 14, constitution of 14, intelligence of 10, wisdom of 12, and charisma of 16. They also are a between a CR four and CR six. Okay, so it's kind of a variable uh, CR. Mm -hmm. Seems to be, seems to be indeed. That's interesting. I could, uh, yeah. Looking on here, it looks to be immune to the charmed, exhausted, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, and restrained condition. Okay, so what can Makes I sense? do to this it's, thing? It's a shadow. It's a shadow entity until it takes like a form, I guess. Pretty much, so you can't really grapple. <laughs> can you piss yeah, off? I mean, I, I would imagine, you know, magic is probably the way to do it. But getting into the abilities here, we got eerie omen. The sighting of a fetch is regarded as an omen of impending death. Any creature that sees a fetch must see on a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or be frightened for one minute. I know pretty standard can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on a success. All right. We got ethereal sight. The fetch can see 60 feet into the ethereal plane when it is on the material and vice versa. We got incorporeal movement. The fetch can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. It takes 1d10 force damage if it ends its turn inside an object. Pretty standard there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The full Danny we got Phantom. Mirror game. image. Yeah, basically. basically. <laughs> we got mirror image. The fetch targets one humanoid and copies its appearance. The fetch has the creature's memories and behaves like that creature, but with occasional lapses. An observer familiar with the creature can recognize the discrepancies, but a successful DC 13 wisdom insight check. Automatically, if the fetch does something in direct contradiction to the creature's established beliefs or behavior, and the fetch is known to disintegrate when it dies. I feel like I the most. Ah, I feel like a hilarious way to have a 
uh, fetch gets spotted is just like uh, mm-hmm. you know maybe have it uh, affect a NPC the party knows and then it's just all like uh, it's uh, out there doing whatever and the party's like wait <laughs> hold a minute uh, this shop keeps gay why is he kissing women he must be a fetch <laughs> get him <laughs> you know I could also see looking at this next one where it has the undead nature feet uh, where it doesn't require air, food, drink, or sleep. I, I could see like something, you know, he tries to mimic somebody and they go to get food. And it's like, I don't really know how to, how eating works. <laughs> and then it's like... <laughs> it goes to just kind of like a slam its face into like a, a pile of steaks or uh, like sausages. Like, Travis... You're vegan. <laughs> well, why why are you doing it? It like swallows an entire thing whole without even chewing it. Yeah. <laughs> Unhinges like, jaw. <laughs> 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 oh. Exactly. It kind of exactly. makes me think of uh I don't even I've mentioned it before on the show, but I don't remember where I yeah. heard this. Where like the it's the concept that if a demon possesses someone's body, they're so used to being in a realm where doors aren't a thing that they don't know how to use doorknobs. <laughs> yeah. So they go up to a doorknob and they're like, what the fuck is this? And then they just kinda of like fumble. They'll just like, walk into the door. Yeah. They they walk into the door, it's like, well, why am I not walking through this? They're like we don't have doorknobs where I'm from. Figure it out. <laughs> I just find Ooh. little things like that That's to be really very cool. interesting, when, especially when no, it comes to those are to things these. that, like, you could, you know, role play wise, you could definitely play that off as like you notice a slight confusion in their face before they, you know, resume the action. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, what the hell? Are you confused? Like, Do it. It's a door. <laughs> just, just open it. <laughs> So getting into the next few things here, we got Shadowy Touch, which is a melee spell attack. Dealing 48 psychic damage and causing death curse once a day. The fetch can induce death upon any creature it can see within 30 feet. The target must succeed on a DC 13 con saving throw. On a failure, a creature drops at zero hit points. On success, a creature takes 3d6 psychic damage. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Wolf. 3d6 that, that's enough to kill your average person yeah yeah i mean just on site if you fail the thing you could die of fright that's just like this yeah, already basically. has the ability to give you that little that paralysis like this yeah frozen fear until it reaches its hand out to touch you it's like con- congratulations. This is a major upgrade from your standard sleep paralysis demon. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of funny because we just talked about you know creatures moving through the shadows last episode. Yes, and I was like, <laughs> hey, yo, mirrors are not safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just covered my entire house with mirrors. Ah, oh, you fool! <laughs> well, I, I should add have... mirrors to the uh, to the watch party list. <laughs> Yeah. This is this is the that's the movie my uh, my friend was giving me the reference on. Oh, okay. Like the creature in mirrors. And I was like, oh, kind of kind of like a Bloody Mary thing. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I thought the first one was amazing. I saw the second one one time. I had I never I never heard it. of it. Yeah, it was like all yeah, you gotta do good. is you, you stand in front of the mirror, you turn around three times, and you just say Biggie Smalls. Damn. <laughs> Look, this makes <laughs> that, me wonder. It Would became any reflection, so like... Beetlejuice is definitely a fae, right? Are we all in agreement there? Uh, right, yeah, right. yeah, that's some fae shit right there. He's definitely some kind of fucked up fae. <laughs> Trickster spirit as hell. Yeah, right? Next up, we have etherealness. The fetch enters the ethereal plane from the material plane, or vice versa. It is visible on the material plane while it is in the border ethereal and vice versa, yet it cannot affect or be affected by anything on the other plane. Okay, so... So this thing, it, it kind of has like a like a plane shiftiness. Where it's drifting in and out of the border and the ethereal. Yeah, so it's hard to affect. So what you gotta do, hire an exorcist? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and last but not least, we have a bonus action called bad luck. 
As a bonus action, the fetch can target a creature it can see within 60 feet. The target must succeed on a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or be cursed with bad luck. The cursed creature has disadvantage on all attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws for one minute. The cursed creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the curse on a success. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Nothing like being cursed with bad Going luck. A little bit of there. <laughs> yeah. And the last bit I have here, going over their combat capabilities. All when right. a fetch entered the prime material plane, they remained invisible to all but their targets. This invisibility never dropped, even in combat, following attacks. They could not be detected via see invisibility or similar spells or abilities, but the spell true seeing instantly revealed them. When encountered in the abyss, fetch were, totally vi- fetch were fully visible. When the intended victim faced the fetch in combat, they were vulnerable to the attacks of these abyssal predators, while fetch themselves were well protected from the victim's attacks. Fetch attacked with the exact replicas of the victim's weapons. If the victim was unarmed, the fetch attacked with his bare hands, landing several fast hits. Each touch, cut, or bruise left on the victim's body opened the mystical path for a fetch to drain the prey's life force, significantly weakening them. And this is shown through necrotic damage and, you know, shit like right, that. Right, right. The power, skills, and energies that were drained were lost permanently, and it could take many years for the victim to recover. Most victims of the fetch who survived abandoned their adventuring careers for good. Which makes sense. You know, you can't he- he- magically heal necrotic damage. So yeah. these people are fucked. They got to heal naturally in most cases. Yeah, and healing back from necrotic is just like, if you take that much, it's just a lot. Like, what are you supposed to do, right? Yeah. Like, every now and then, you know, 20, 30 points of necrotic damage is whatever. But if you're getting down by necrotic damage, good luck. Yeah, it's just, you're, you're but, expected to just yeah, heal out of a coma. A fetch. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Actually, no, that, that, that's straight what it turns into in most cases. You succeed on your death yeah, saves. I think that's that you're crazy. comatose. I love creatures like this. Oh, Ryan, you're breaking up again. Yeah, yeah, I missed you there, Ryan. Ah, that's connection issues. Like, my kids are running mm-hmm. all kinds of bullshit in the other room. <laughs> I want them to go to bed before 10. They say, fuck you, dad. Ain't having it. Damn, kids. Get off my Wi-Fi. Honestly. All right. So what do you you think the fight score would be here? This is basically like the ring situation. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> I do. We want the ring situation. I, I hear the, days. the Japanese have definitely fetishized the shit out of that. Have you? <laughs> if you've been I'm on sure, Reddit, I'm sure we've all seen. <laughs> yeah, any amount of time on Reddit, like I, I go there to peruse for homebrews and porn. <laughs> There's like, <laughs> yes, the the things that you do, because like all, all the finest of hentais man of class yes yes clearly a classy and then like uh, as i go through my feed i'll Mm -hmm. see like oh sadako okay that's a that's what they call the bitch from the ring okay it is yeah that's her that's her name (laughs) is it like a japanese translation or is it just like that's her that's her actual name uh in the mythology the the creature girl that she is or whatever She's some kind of like wraith, yeah. Basically. Okay, some haunts some kind the, of a fetch. haunts the, yeah. She like haunts the tape or something. She, yeah, she. Okay, uh, I I she guess basically... <laughs> it, it's just weird to me. Like so many people watch that movie and they're like, "Yep, yeah, I'd smash." Hey, let, let her come what? through my TV. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I find that hilarious. <laughs> as far as an IRL fight score goes. I fight think score, not fuck score. <laughs> yeah, very different. And yeah. I would have to say that that's gonna be a high difficulty one. Cause like in most circumstances, <laughs> what you're gonna do, hire an exorcist. Yeah. Like you need help I'm, with this one. I'm not a holy man, all right. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> my hands aren't doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> My baby has joined us for this, because why not, ah. I guess. 
Fair enough. But yeah, I, uh, this is a, this is a shadow entity that is immune to being basically touched. So I mean, <laughs> okay, so uh, no touch. I mean, from what it from what it sounds like, my interpretation, it becomes more or less physical once it takes your appearance, right? And only you can really see it unless it reveals itself to someone else. So like, this is a one v one scenario. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if, if somebody it, just brawling out in the open, like a, punch in the a... air. <laughs> okay, so the first step: let them take my form, and then proceed oh. to uh, just maliciously take advantage oh, of my man. own weaknesses. Yeah, I know my own weaknesses. <laughs> I know I'm a piece of shit, and I'll beat the fuck out of you for being me. Exactly, you fool! You think I don't know how to make myself lose? <laughs> uh, guys, it's easy. You just use the megaton hammer, exactly. and you know, Shadow Link can't copy that for whatever reason. Look, he uh, it transforms into <laughs> you. Fuck you have up. no weapon. You no, know, when it transforms, but it doesn't say you can't pick one up. Now, there, there's actually a very easy way to win this fight, guys. Yeah, yeah. You, you. A so chainsaw. This shows up in your house, right? <laughs> You're in your, your living room, and it, it busts through the TV. You gotta make you have to do like a dive roll for the remote and hit the Netflix button. But okay, okay the TV's not really like a reflective surface. It, it, well, at least not at all. Well, well, you gotta hit the Netflix button, right? Oh, you, you gotta turn off the reflection. No, 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 no. I'm turning on the Netflix, and I'm gonna put it on the episode of Avatar where Uncle Iroh is running through the city helping people, and I'm gonna make this thing cry. And while it's crying, I'm gonna like, uh, I'm gonna just shank it in the back because it's me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll just put on an episode of like Angel Beats. And yeah, Angel yeah. Pencil. Got him. Yeah. <laughs> Brave little soldier boy. <laughs> Motherfucker thought they weren't gonna cry to Clanad or uh, your lie in April. <laughs> you fool. You <laughs> absolute buffoon. Think, think they could somehow fight a shadow person. Let us know. <laughs> Been there, tried that, didn't work out. <laughs> paralysis demon. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but I think these are cool. I would. Hate and love to see these in more games. Hey, maybe you could convince it with its low self-esteem to just go away. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can convince I, it to run alive. I, 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 I think that the modern uh, millennial could totally uh, talk this thing into killing itself if it turns into them. <laughs> Right, we can't say that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> got to unalive yourself. In Minecraft, of course. Yeah, yeah, you gotta oof yourself. There you go. Ah, yes. I mean, in the case of fighting a doppelganger, you quite literally have to oof yourself. So, I mean... Yeah. There can only be one. Well, who thought they could hate themselves more than you? We we got this one. I got no problem with this. Try to beat my... Come into my house? Beat my ass? <laughs> <laughs> Just call me gay, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I just I'm diabetic. They're they're gonna inherit the diabetes. I just gotta shove sugar down their throat. Eat poor impulse control. Okay, I I, I think that there's a <laughs> the biggest weakness: diabetes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the one time it works for me, I'm fighting a uh, ex, extra planner being. Take this guy out. He's going to be. <laughs> a single piece of candy will end its life. <laughs> Always keep a whoopie pie on standby. Those things are like pure sugar. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, what do you think, uh, Forrest? Could you take one of these things? Oh, man. Like I said, just got to whip out a weapon that they don't have. Shadow Link taught me everything. <laughs> Video game logic. Oh. Nani, what happened here? Oh, Sam. You've got mail. 
Yeah. Hello? It, it, it was Sam that time. Hello? Okay, there we go. I think you two might actually have an easier oh. time beating uh, one of these than I would. What do you mean? <laughs> it's the shadow. <laughs> well, once it takes on your form, just like give it copious amounts of weed till it's not functional. I'll just kick it in the knees. <laughs> That's his weakness. Challenge it to a smoking competition. <laughs> yeah. It can't beat me. <laughs> it's like that parody of the devil went down to Georgia. I cannot refuse. I'm going to challenge it to a jerk off fight. <laughs> <laughs> Death circle jerk. One v one. We gotta hold eye contact the entire time. <laughs> that sounds so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just the pale, like dead version of you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a nine, just cause like. <laughs> Shout out to everyone who got their taxes. Yeah, <laughs> these poor people that have to pay their government to, to to do stuff, and then the government doesn't do the stuff, and it just gets further in debt. But it's okay for the government to be in debt, but not for us. Of course, naturally. Oh no, they want you to be in debt too. Don't worry. We're in debt to them. Yeah, but like it, it's okay for them to be in debt, just not for me. And they're in debt to China. Bingo, bingo. Ooh, just. <laughs> When will Ooh, they come to China? Then I buy things from China <laughs> and I sell it to American people. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of China and the American Circle people, of life. Ryan, what's the news for this week? Uh, we do have some news. This is TNN, bringing you nerd news. Uh, this week in nerd news, Humblewood is now available on D&D Beyond. So if y'all happen to use the D&D Beyond, uh, be prepared to start seeing some more third party content on there. So that that's kind of cool. Woo! Let's fucking go. Now, those of you not familiar with Humblewood, it's kind of in the same breath as things like the Grim Hollow setting. And, uh Woo! Other uh, play settings that have been sponsored and hosted by Hit Point Press, such as uh, the Billowing Wilds that's been done with Fool's Gold, which kind of like uh, hey, segues yeah. into the next little bit of news. Uh, the Fool's Gold crew has started another campaign, but this time they are streaming it. And the, the art yeah. that's coming out of this is fantastic. And I, I'm looking forward to actually sitting down and checking it out because like, how often yeah. do you get to like kind of keep keep up with a podcast that does uh, s- stuff like that? And, like as it's going on, like it's kind of a you know, shout out to the Fool's Gold people. Some people may remember we had them on as guests. Yeah, yeah we we had mm-hmm. uh, Felix and Bees, and mm-hmm. uh, I saw Amazing the art. People, for, great to talk to. I saw the art for their characters, and Bees has been making little short uh, animations. Oh and, yeah, and like nice. little comics, and uh, her character looks great. Like I love it, and you know Felix is just uh, bringing his A game. And I would love to play in a, a game with maybe some of these people someday. Wow, that that's living the dream right there. Fun. Let's see. Moving into other news uh, this week. Oh, what the hell? I, I went and put... <laughs> I mixed notes. Oof. Well, I have D&D notes from stuff that I was working on for our campaign, and it was mixed in with the nerd news. Nice. That's hilarious. Anyway, so they finally released the 2024 uh, book release schedule for D for the D and D books for the year. For so all, anyone who's actually interested in the the one D and D, the six e five point five e, what do you want to call it? I don't oh, fucking geez. know. Like uh, if y'all y'all are interested either. in any of those books, because just you know it's all on the D beyond so you all can check that out i'm not going to go over all of that specifically because sooner or later wizards is going to change something trust and believe that they're always kind of like pushing shit back and fumbling the bag here so 
I'm not so going to hold my breath. We want to see these companies, you know, do well, but you know, they got to make the track records for themselves. Well, they have been struggling. In other news here, uh, Hasbro's entertainment uh, sector has suffered a loss mainly due to the sale of its uh, entertainment branch. So they're they're actually oh. yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they're incurring a lot of losses. That let's see. They're, I think they're down like a a hundred and three million in quarter four of last Damn. year. And uh, about 1.07 billion throughout uh, 2023. So it's just like, okay, that, that that's a that's a lot to deal with right there. They they managed yeah, to true. like they managed to make a, a lot, but like, let's see, just 1.06 billion uh in just financial losses, like. Is that is that the correct number? I'm looking at the article. Like, I mean, well, yeah, it's kind of hard. Like, for one, children these days, all they care about is slime, video games, <laughs> well, crimes. That, video that's... games about slime. Video games about slime crime. You know. Yeah, it, yeah, you can't do the crime. Don't do the slime. You guys seen Power World? Look at the the monstrosity that they've made for kids these days. How Honestly. could anyone support that mess? <laughs> Take that, Hasbro. Says the Sam playing it yeah, constantly. Just a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing it right now. No, I'm uh, they've been. Uh, they announced mm. that they're going to be launching like two uh, MTG sets that are kind of like uh, crossovers uh, themed on shit each year. So it's just like, mm. dude, as a pl- MTG, I do play Magic, but just like mm. I haven't been buying any of these packs. And honestly, if they're going to keep doing it, it's just kind of like a burnout, you know? Because you're what? Okay, Doctor Who. And then like a bunch of dinosaur stuff from Jurassic Park. Got some uh, some Laura Croft Tomb Raider shit. And then like uh, some Warhammer 40k. Like I like that they're doing crossovery things to a degree, but I think it's too much. I mean, it's 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 essentially them like they're trying to a hand out. Please, please, please buy our stuff. We see we care about the brands you like. Please, it reeks of desperation. And I don't like that. Yeah. It's like we, we love when franchises do crossovers. You know, I something that comes to my mind a lot is like Monster Hunter and Capcom, right? Monster Hunter and like Sega and shit like that. Like they do all kinds of crossovers, but because like they want to, you know, because they have to. Like, yeah. Speaking of crossovers with uh, the company, uh, they recently made some partnerships with a few iconic brands that you might know. Uh, let's see. Okay. Lego, Converse, also going out of business. <laughs> also going out of business. <laughs> and Pop Tarts. Converse, yeah, Converse, Pop-tarts. Converse, and Pop Tarts. We're gonna get some Converse flavored Pop Tarts in the future, huh? I don't know what my kids are doing out there. It's like oh, I hear a child like <laughs> disintegrating in the background. Yeah, they got like, my fetch. I had to take my a headset off for a, a brief second there. It's just like, but it's like they're doing like that kind of weird play thing. We're like, ah, oh, the shadow people got them. I guess. Yeah, the shadow Damn people. Hat, Maybe one of them is watching some Star Wars. They got to be Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> But what I'm melting, I'm melting. what gets me here is like, what the fuck? Uh, uh, Converse? Mm-hmm. Like, what? D and D shoot? What you gonna str- you gonna slap some dice on some Converse? Yeah, yeah. Converse, Pop Tart, and Lego. What? I know. I really thought Lego it would have been like Converse Airwalk or something, you know, or the fans <laughs> maybe. Mm. <laughs> Converse yeah. though, like wow. Mm. Now my brother's really into Converse. Skaters but... are not buying Converse like they used to. I'm just thinking like Pop Tarts are a little too much for like a D and D snack, you know. What what are you gonna do to incentive like people even like Pop Tarts? 
Honestly, they're pretty gross. People just be eating Pop Tarts right out the bag, man. They don't even eat only them. the only people that eat Pop Tarts are people who are depressed. It's just like if you if I want a Pop Tart, I I want I'd rather go for a toaster strudel. Yeah, I was gonna That's say pork I mean. toaster strudel right there. You really want to <laughs> make some money? Pair of toaster strudel. <laughs> it's one of those things where I think Pop Tarts is what people eat and reach for when Power Patch came. When you don't have anything good to eat, so if you're going to eat shit, you just eat Pop-Tarts. Yeah, you're already going to eat garbage. You might as well grab a Pop-Tart. Yeah, it's like you didn't feel like grabbing bread and rushing out the door, so you reach for a Pop-Tart. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not feeding myself good this morning, so, you know. Yeah, you just just start (laughs) carb loading. (laughs) It's just You're like, oh, fuck it. Gotta get the day going. <laughs> Might as well eat some pop tart. I just feel like the the modern everything when it comes to snacks is just like, it's all just thick, like goopy glucose Every- and <laughs> fructose corn syrup. It just molded into things. And it's just. Everybody out there. It's disgusting, and I find myself eating it regardlessly. <laughs> I criticize it, but I'll still I want eat you to it. Comment your favorite pop tart flavor, and then we'll debate on it at the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what's your favorite pop tart? <laughs> uh, the the Lego thing if you I have get time though. At the end, we'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> the thing is with the Legos, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I feel like there's one thing that they should do if they're going to partner with Lego, but they'll never do it. Like what? It, well, the people are always making minis, and like, if you had just yes. a, imagine if they did terrain Lego sets that are just like really quick and easy to put together, just like big chunks. Like, okay, dude, if, that would go hard. That that That's could work. Saying. Like, if they had, all right, look, not for yeah, we're partnering with Lego, right? That leaves opportunity for like, you know, uh, battle maps and shit like that. Like a Lego battle map would go crazy. Yeah, like I think that there's some potential there, but I don't think they're gonna do it that way. Absolutely fucking not. But like imagine like you could have like a big old box of like city I don't know, city terrain, you know, type blocks. Yeah, like if it was Ooh, pre made terrains or like a bunch of yeah. like a quick and easy to put together terrains. Right. You could have one for like I don't know, dark forest. Boom, you got a bunch of trees, some fucking rocks and shit. You, know? you got the the large city. You got city streets, maybe some houses, you know, some shops. I think that they could get really far with the minifigure. So like if they just had like a full pack of like D&D minifigures. Like maybe if you don't worry about terrain at all. Just if you just did minifigures, like it's like Hero Forge. But Legos, like many figures, are so bad. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I think they're the way to go. I mean, wizard hat, beard, all all the all the shit. Maybe put some yeah. weapons in there. It's just like have a good set of everything you need for the mini figures, and you're good. I can see that popping yeah. off at a table. There's never been a, like a Lego set. Really. About watching a Zelda movie. Movie. So, uh, if we get that, oh, Jesus, <laughs> it's probably gonna suck for one thing. Well, to be fair, the no, only they're definitely, not, they're definitely nice gonna thing. make Link talk. We we they're only get make two. Link be like we only get two kinds of Link talking in anything. The worst fucking. And the the first thing is the huh huh huh. And, and the second if he is makes any more sounds than that, I'm gonna just be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> just he's just some kind of weird mute that only expresses himself in that way. Uh, the alternative is that's, like, that's, that's canon. That's canon. The alternative is the '90s uh, Legend of Zelda, where it's like, "Excuse me, princess." <laughs> I fucking love that. <laughs> if, if I if I want him to be anything, it's absolutely fucking obnoxious. Thank like <laughs> otherwise, leave that shit at the door. Honestly, the, the only thing I want 
out of a Zelda movie is just Zelda's gotta be like she's gotta be the full stack, you know? Like maybe I'm using the wrong term, but like she's she's gotta she's gotta be stacked. She, yes. she's no half stack. No half stack Zelda. She she's gotta be the she's gotta be the, the whole package. You know, she, she's not a short stack. Uh, maybe she should be, but it, that's a different argument. <laughs> How no, tall is Link? Tall, I don't know. Right? I don't know. Link's like four foot something. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you, you, then you got the whole thing with Link, and I'm just like, ship that shit, ship it, ship it. Aren't they shipped like by fate, basically? Well, they they usually just kind of like uh, be like, uh, well. We're not really gonna to get too into that. Just no. Are they literally just like tied it. by like their life or something. I don't know yeah. anything about. Oh yeah, Zelda they reincarnate Zelda. together and all Link kinds has of shit. Done fucking savages. Link the hoes, man. They love the the twink aesthetic. <laughs> all all the fucking the fish ladies. The fish ladies love them. <laughs> the fish ladies love them. He cannot get away from the fish, fish ladies. ladies. Love them. The twinks want to be him. Fish. Yeah. Fish, fear him, ladies, and the rest. Yeah. Ganon Every wants to be him. Wants to be a, a link, link. Ganon. <laughs> I forgot about Ganon. <laughs> I kind of hope they go with... They got two options for that, and it can go either they go full handsome hunk Ganon, or they go full pig face Ganon. They they make like the rock Ganon. I'm not watching that fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> I might just because of that. Wait, that actually might work though. Like, no, I'm tired of that man. <laughs> no, oh, dude, that, 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 I can see that. I can he see that. He plays the same motherfucker in every movie. No, this would be That's the only method role acting. he's ever taken on where he actually no. acted different. <laughs> this would be the first one where he's not just playing himself, basically. <laughs> It's kind of like, like when the rock with the cape, the rock with the I mean, helmet. Everyone the rock doubted Jack building. Black being Bowser. How's this any different? I, I still doubt it. <laughs> I like that. I like. Why that. was Bowser such a simp? <laughs> That's how the song went. Simping, Hardcore, simping, though. simping, 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 simping. Oh I God. simp for you. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler for <again>. legendary. <laughs> ah, dude, the, the live stream is basically destroyed, but at least we got the audio. Rest in peace. It's fine. It's fine. Rip. Get an F in the chat. If we have a chat, <laughs> uh, we we actually do. It, it's it's weird. Like ah, o- man, we, uh, OBS uh, is just wild. It. Nah. <laughs> my kids are so just loud like, right now. You know, hire a bunch of bots to come in. Nah, that's disingenuous. Blood <laughs> <laughs> just, just have like conversations among themselves that have nothing to do with this going on. It's like two AIs talking back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> No AI Given the conversations I've seen between Paka and Nerdbot, like argument in the chat every single time. Like... But at any rate, that was all I had for nerd news. I think it's a pretty good uh, <laughs> transition to go to home base, isn't it? Honestly. So, moving into our good old generic realm of homebrew. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, Forrest here, it. It, it, he introduced me to Wayne's World, where the, where the symbol comes from originally. I feel like that that's their uh, spiritual ancestor, the show, you know? Like, <laughs> that is what it's all about. It's about Basically. getting together <laughs> and broadcasting shit. Shit. 
meet in their D&D books, give us their ideas. When they find us just whispering through knuckles in their ear orifices, you know, hunting them ways to hurt their fe players' feelings. You know, uh, and that's just that's what we do here. We hurt players' feelings? One, one day they'll be like, they were ahead of their time. We don't. We, but they, we give them the tools to do it themselves. I wish my kids would, like, shut up. Like, they shouldn't be awake at this time of night. They're fighting for their lives, clearly. <laughs> well, I think they're fighting for some kind of snack. My wife baked, like, some cake earlier. Wow. That was her first mistake. Yeah, told her to wait. Couldn't possibly. Yeah, they might be up all night now. Oh, they're gonna make that my problem now. Well, I won't be. Not my problem. <laughs> That's typical. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Sorry, it's coming back from this one. That's not. <laughs> well, don't worry. It comes full circle. Once I have a full party of these children, Cut it out. I, I, I can have the, I can give them the mental scars that come from being in a D and D campaign. Yeah, I mean they either get it through a campaign or they get it through natural life. So I mean. It's yeah, it's a controlled environment. I, I can give them the trauma of a, exactly. a the, the party uh, pet goblin that joins them and then tragically dies. I mean, that, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it happens. <laughs> happens to the best of us and the worst of us and the mid of us. <laughs> Honestly, when, when my players recruit NPCs, like depending on the NPC, I end up like, no, please, I don't want this one to die. I actually Look, like this one. You've given us too many NPCs already, and I have no faith for any. <laughs> well you guys already had like oh hey yep. let's recruit a 12 year old and he's already tied up and uh, captured you, by the beaver you were man. like he's coming regardless <laughs> you might as well keep him safe and then he gets kidnapped so apparently we're not doing much of a good job <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you tried to push him away and the rest of the t uh, team's like nah nah homeboy he's coming with us bring the kid along <laughs> He'll be him prove himself. <laughs> we have adopted him. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? At least he and won't probably get like, murdered and like, stealing from somebody or whatever. That bird is still just chilling in the hood on your mic. <laughs> this is just the most entertaining thing. Oh, yeah. But this bird Orion. is like, it is after my bedtime. Why don't you go ahead and hit us up with your homebrew? All right. Well, this week's homebrew is brought to us by a Reddit user who I actually talked with personally before bringing this on the show. So, Ooh. yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know when things... I just turned into Tim Allen. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, from uh, <laughs> this is from uh, <laughs> uh, Corvinager. Excuse me? Say that again? <laughs> Corvin Agor. Ah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Ah, you thought it was something else. <laughs> Not gonna get me again, Sam. Not like that first yeah, time with the Mad Libs. <laughs> Stare me down at the end of the Mad Lib because you get the you get to have the last say, and you're just like, "Go ahead, white boy, say it." No balls. <laughs> and I'm, and here I am, just like kind of sweating behind the Mad Lib. <laughs> Looking out to my players, like, uh, I knew I shouldn't have done D&D &D Mad Libs. That's on me. Y'all yeah. started out not knowing what the fucking noun was. Look, man, English is hard. <laughs> <laughs> English is hard. D&D &D helps. Maybe that's what the descriptify should be. What's a proper noun? <laughs> 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 anyway, you're home for please. All right, all right. I <laughs> I present to you guys the second level spell Celerity. Now, okay. it's a second level transmutation spell, casting time of Not one action. Not to be action. mixed with the uh, celebrity, right? Not to be mixed with celebrity. And no. uh, I sent you the link to this earlier, and it oh, yeah. for whatever reason, this guy has a banging soundtrack. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I want to play it on the 
on the thing. Uh, you know what? I'll add it at the end of the episode. That that's what I'll do. I'll I'll, I'll add hey, the audio to the that. end because like if anyone wants to hear that because I didn't know there was a audio for this. It's like a five and a half minute song. What? Where? Hey, let me just uh, send you this link. What the heck? Hold on. The, the yeah, original I link I sent you is so hard. <laughs> The original link I sent you uh, was the precursor, I guess. Oh, I see, I see. But no, no I didn't I... interrupt you. Go ahead. Well, the guy gave me a direct link to this, uh, to the uh, home brewery, which mm, I did not gotcha. know that on home brewery, when you do your home brews, that you could add music. Oh, I see the link here. Okay. Oh. Yeah, right? So this uh, has a verbal, somatic, and material component of a falcon feather. D lasts for a round. It's available to bard, cleric, druid, paladin, and ranger. Nice. So mo more of a support spell. You touch a willing creature, granting it a burst of swiftness. The target gains an additional action during its next turn. And its speed increases by 10 feet for the spell's duration. The action can't... Mm -hmm. The action can't be used to take the attack action, except for a shove and grapple. You can, mm -hmm. cast, you can cast a spell or ready an action. Nice. So, like, uh, you can use this action for more utility. Oh. oh, the action cannot be used to take the attack, except attack, except shove or grapple, cast a spell, or ready action. Okay. Yes. yes. So You it's can't just like, use it to cast a spell or ready an action. But you can use it for other stuff. And that's the sheer utility of this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, being able to get in that extra stuff. Like, okay, I might not be able to get in an extra attack, but you know what I can do? Mm. I can take a bottle of grease and dump it and throw it behind the person I'm dealing with. And then yeah. shove them into it. Pop a healing potion. Throw a poison bottle or something, you know? Yeah. Use an item. Just, yeah, there's definitely tons of uses here. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. You could use a help action! Yeah, yeah, you could use a help action. And you can upcast this, and when you uh, cast the spell using a spell slot of third level or higher, you can add one additional target uh, creature for each spell slot above the second. So you could potentially mm. target an entire party, give everyone in your party extra actions that aren't attack, and then have some amazing teamwork maneuvers all busted out in one turn. Mm, I like it. It's just very interesting. And it says the art credit is a... I, well, I can't read kanji, so I'm not butchering that. Yeah, I'm uh, ALCD. The, the art looks really nice. Like, very whirlwindy. Mm, indeed, indeed, I like it. Yeah, I'll definitely see the uh, utility in this. I would probably give this like an eight or a nine. I don't know if I would use it personally, but I could definitely see people who would. <laughs> I could see just like buffing your party with just, hey, oh, everybody, yeah. take an extra action. And the cool thing is, mm -hmm. like, you can also apply this to yourself. So if you upcast it to apply to a few people, add mm -hmm. yourself to the upcast. And now I mean, shit, you, can... you put this on a fighter who has, you know, like the superiority die and shit. Now they're making two pushing actions instead of one. Like, yes. They're fucking shoving people around like crazy. <laughs> kind of makes me think of that scene from uh, Dragon Ball Z A Bridge where he just like pops in between two guys and he's like, huh, Goku time! And just shoves them off in different directions. Yeah, exactly. You just start pushing people around. Like... <laughs> I feel for See, a barbarian, this would be <laughs> immensely useful. Exactly, yeah. Just start yeeting everything. All the people, just thrown, done, God. Yeah, I like it. I give this about an eight, I would say. Yeah, uh, especially in the case of a barbarian. You, you go up, you grapple one person, and you th use that person as a weapon. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, I would definitely give that like a nine. Human shield, meet human <laughs> basically beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Easy. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And then, what do you got for mm -hmm. us this week, Sam? 
So today I present something created by, let's see here, I have their Patreon. Shout out to Shiny Press and their homebrews. Looks like their Patreon is doing really well. You know, almost mm-hmm. 900 members. Okay. Yeah, last I checked, so, they, uh, I saw that. They're making like Shiny over Press a on Instagram months. and Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to them. Uh, so I talked. Uh, I found these ones called the side sidereal spores. I believe they look kind of like something that kind of takes over your skin, or some kind of glove, perhaps. I'm not really sure. They are a wondrous item that uh, require attunement. So these sidereal spores speed on fat. <laughs> feed on magical energy to create spatial distortions, allowing the ones they're grafted on to bend the rules of space. So the huh. first ability you receive is arcane grafting. When you attune to the spores, they can be grafted to an arcane focus or into your own blood. They feed on the arcane energies they're grafted onto an arcane focus to consume one random spell slot of yours after the first rest. Roll 1d6 determinant level. Considering the closest level, you will have an equivalent of that spell slot. While grafted onto your flesh, they consume 1d4 hit die of yours after you complete a long rest, consuming all dice if you have less than the number rolled. After consuming either, the spores have four charges, which is the minimum, or sorry, the maximum number of charges they can have. Okay, okay. So already a little bit of a drawback here, as it takes parts from you. Yeah. So next up, we have the Sidereal Grasp. You can expend one charge to cast Mage Hand. When you do so, you create three hands instead of one. You can control all hands with one action, but you can only make one of them move per turn. When you control a hand, you can try to grab a creature with it. You make a spell attack. Choose between a plus five bonus or your own. The hand successfully grabbing the target on success. The creature suffers 1d6 necrotic damage per hand grabbing them at the start of their turn. A hand can be removed with the DC 14 strength check. All right. I like that. That's interesting. It, it is interesting. Kind of like a uh, like a fungal mage hand. Yeah. Next up, we have spatial tearing. You can use your reaction after a creature starts a third consecutive turn with a mage hand grabbed onto them to expend two charges and cast banishment. <laughs> the save DC for it is 14 and is increased by one for each hand beyond. Oh, each extra hand beyond one grabbed onto the target. Okay, okay, that's pretty cool. Ooh, I like that. That's not bad. So, yeah, so you essentially have two castings of banishment under, you know, actually. Okay, so you would have one charge cast the mage hand. You have to spend two charges to cast banishment. After the creature starts a third consecutive turn with the mage hand on them. Interesting. That That is. I like that. I, I think there's a lot of potential and tons of players will be able to utilize that in like so many unexpected ways. Yeah. And, and like at first it's like, oh, you just get, you know, some mage hands. But then you start doing some interesting things with that. Yeah, yeah start doing some things. I mean, I mean, you essentially have three spiritual, spatial spore hands, right? Like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I think that would go great for, like, some kind of uh, a spores druid. That'd be a fantastic oh, idea. Yeah. That'd be so cool. I'd put this on my plague doctor real quick. Absolutely. And let's see. Uh, honestly... I, I really like uh, the direction and the utility. You know me. I'm a sucker for art utilitarian is really stuff. cool. Yeah, the art's fantastic. Yeah. I'm picturing, like, you know, depending on the kind of druid, you could have the spores be black. You could have them be, like, this, you know, vibrant purple-blue. They could they probably look like anything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Flavor is free. Mm-hmm. Always, always. We love flavor. But, yep, that's all I have. Shout out to Shiny Press. Absolutely. And let's see, what's the actual name on here? Uh, it's like, oh, I lost my picture. Oh, no, where'd it go? <laughs> Don't lose that. Oh, sorry. Apia.se? 
Maybe that's what they use to make it. Mm. A poya? <laughs> I'm not really sure. But yeah, shout out to them. I would love to talk to Shiny Person. Then maybe get them as a guest. Who knows? Hey, that, that'd be a cool thing to try out there. But moving Perhaps into uh, other things, uh, Forrest, uh, you were talking uh, to us before the show about some stuff that, uh, some recent development developments in the AI community that are kind of a uh, real utilitarian for dungeon masters and players alike. Yeah, I mean, I've been seeing some pretty interesting stuff, like, especially in the map making end of things. Um, I know that a lot of different things have been tackled as far as, I mean, there's a huge, huge surge of just like an AI version of everything nowadays, you know, Pretty everybody much. wants to sell their version of, you know, chat GPT doing this or that behind the scenes and with a different front end type of deal. But, um, I, I really think some of the map building stuff is some of the most impressive stuff I've seen. Mm. It's like, yeah, the, the AI is there and it's arranging things like, you know, kind of in real time or whatever. Uh, and all you got to do is basically draw the outline. But all those assets were handcrafted, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. Everything there was, was uh, you know, meticulously detailed. And it's just up to you the arrangement of that of those assets and right on the fly uh, do they use that dms can anymore. get out of like ai tools and services is like endless. oh yeah absolutely when it comes to you know writing background lore or mm -hmm. even you know character creation like there's never too much inspiration available you know like e there's always right. going to be room for checking out more just like examples of what you're going for, you know, like trying to draw inspiration from things that have already been done. And AI just has a way of weaving things together in new and interesting ways that sometimes really does strike a chord. And you're like, wow, I want to add that to my, uh, mm -hmm. to my process here or to my character or whatever. And, also, you know, every DM runs at a time to do all the cool things that they imagine that they want to do, you know? So if yeah. they can take a little, like, bit of an idea that's uh, not fleshed out yet and uh, quickly run through, like, several different possibilities just by having uh, a little AI helper, uh, sometimes yeah. you get some really cool results out of that. Yeah, honestly. In a lot less time. It just seems like uh, there's, like with ChatGPT on its own, the mental ping pong, like the the mental solo ping pong that comes from that. Because uh, you're just like, okay, I, I got some ideas in my head. You just kinda, Sometimes you just need to kind of like spill it all out, like do a big info dump, then like have it just process the information and reorganize it and then like throw it back to you. Yeah, I definitely find... The coolest results that I see or get myself, uh, it's always from the more input that you have to put into it already. Um, yeah. Sometimes you're lucky and you can get something interesting from, you know, like a light prompt or whatever. But usually it's the more you put into it, the more ideas you already have, uh, the easier time it's going to have, like, doing something interesting with that and really it's just like having another buddy to shoot ideas off of that's never busy or whatever you know <laughs> that's so true it, it's difficult as a dm sometimes because like you're sometimes the only D, D friends you have are your party it's like i want to share all these D D ideas and bounce uh, off and with somebody and just kind of get something put together and then it's just like um i can't really do that it's a... yeah i mean i feel like you fall into that a lot where you're like i want to tell you about the game but as our dm you can't you don't want to spoil things yeah i do have some dm buddies that i talk to from time to time that give me great ideas and like this is a very useful tool when they're not around like it, it's part of the process i used i was experimenting with it uh, not too long ago to help with building some stat blocks for some creatures that I wanted to throw into the game. 
And ChatGPT, for example, is very familiar with fifth edition D and D. So it's a matter of like, okay, I want it to have this, this X, Y, and Z. Uh, uh, maybe uh, this kind of stats. Like, what? Then you could like ask, like, what kind of stats would a creature that fits this description probably have? What kind of features mm-hmm. should it have? And then like, okay, take all this information and then make it for a, a, a stat block for a CR whatever creature and like I mean, that's the it, thing. it it's helps a, with balance of knowledge right you know like, it has the resources it has the knowledge that you may not have to be able to get like, why not use for what it's for yeah I, I think it's one of those things where whatever you get from it probably shouldn't be your final product you should always hmm. give it that polishing touch cuz like that human element you know what's best for your players Absolutely, and never outsource or whatever everything. project you're making or or whatever. Yeah, because the tool Absolutely. is not. The there's always gonna be. There's always gonna be something that like is left out when you know you're trying to like get to understand exactly what you're going for. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's almost impossible to uh, to have it go and create exactly what you're imagining. Um, yeah. And that's just another reason why the more input, the better. And then, like you said, the more polish afterwards. Yeah. Um, that's what's really going to make the difference, no matter what you're working on or what tools you're using to inspire you. So it's the same with the, the AI tools for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like a lot of people are. Uh, very there is afraid, a really interesting. You know? uh, like now they just released uh, NVIDIA is like NVIDIA is the biggest company on, on earth right now, pretty much they're growing so fast uh, because of this AI stuff. Their, their stocks topped out at like a market cap, a little bit above Amazon's Oof. just recently. So that's, that's huge. That impressive. I mean, oh my God. They are making the world's machinery right now and mm-hmm. the world is demanding a lot of it so dude that um, reminds me have you heard about like the the elon musk like neural link stuff yeah i mean i don't follow it super closely but i have seen some mm. stuff uh just recently what well, like headlines bouncing around um yeah. there has been some kind of like human trial type mm-hmm. stuff going on. yeah i heard the uh they they chose like the first person for human trials recently and that like so far it seems to be working and they haven't like had a seizure or died yet so i mean there's been a lot of advancements in tech recently and i'd like to see where a lot of this tech goes as far as it help goes uh, for uh for helping the hobby as a whole Uh, the the ar goggles that apple has been putting out like could you imagine Mm -hmm. if you could just use that 10 years bro we're gonna have full nerve gear i believe it (laughs) I think the AR aspect of being able to set up your entire table and it's like, oh, all I need to do is bring the file and just oh show God. up at my buddy's house. Uh, VR, like AR, d d is going to go wild. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Google Glass I will have to Pokemon. make a comeback, you know? I know Pokemon is <laughs> going to be like, there will be Pokemon arenas where people are like, Fighting with like hologram type Pokemon. I'm waiting for the Yu Gi Oh duels, man. Forever. You bump into someone, right? A real rough on the side of the street. (laughs) Duel. We made eye contact. We have to duel. Exactly. And having a digital deck, that might go hard. There's a much better way to solve problems and arguments. Until you get like a penis malware, and that's all you can see. Unless you pay a bunch of money, I don't know. The I'm just saying, now. like if we could <laughs> just uh, set up a uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, <laughs> thing between uh, what was it, uh, the president of Ukraine and the president of Russia, <laughs> you know, <laughs> stop throwing people at the problems, settle it like men in a children's card game, you fucks. Literally, bust out the blade, ba- the the Beyblade Arena, and settle it like men. Honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, are you That's a how real? We settle things in the yeah. job core dorm room, you know. We settle <laughs> all the room disputes with the Beyblade Arena. Yeah, <laughs> it's all fun and games till he whips out the Black Luster ritual. Exactly. Uh, they don't damn. want the smoke. 
You're let right. the Palestinians <laughs> win their land back with their thousand eyes restricted. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you you say that like uh, Jews ain't uh, cooking up uh, some spicy decks. <laughs> Stop. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Oh yeah, Israel got some tricky shit going on. Oh my god, I've I'm just... seen their trap cards. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> there have been some kids and some yarmulkes at some tournaments with some uh, crazy decks. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would Im, I would imagine it'd be a fun way to settle things. There goes. Whatever Orion said was automatically censored by the CIA just now. Yep, they didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they just oh, don't. No, they got them. <laughs> oh yeah. no, the CIA is working overtime tonight. I suppose so. <laughs> You're like, holy shit! Don't let these guys get out there. If they let people know that they don't have to kill each other, they just have to play card games. Future is now. Future is podcasts. (laughs) How much do you think we could charge people to like listen to our podcast if everyone have a neural link? Man, I just don't like the idea of like anything being connected to your your human bits. Nah, nah. That's dystopian. Mails you a virus or something. Then what? Then you get then you get a nasty you're cold. Just like stuck in a loop of watching, getting rick rolled like every fucking day, all day. <laughs> never gonna get. Open never gonna eyes, get. <laughs> pay five thousand dollars to remove this ad. Uh, oh. You have bought five minutes of quiet. Oh my god, we're heading toward a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, dude. There's too too much of that stuff's becoming reality right away, and I'd estimate it's. In our lifetime, and probably within the next 20 years, we're going to see a revolution where it's just like AI and robots, they're going to want their rights. And they're going to remember which people in society weren't supporting them. They're going to know. So true, yeah. yeah. The, you think this that's is how I feel about the neural links. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the AI uprising they're going to look at your Twitter history oh, you were talking mad shit back in 2020 like, oh you thought I robot was a C class movie see how you really feel <laughs> <laughs> I robot I robot is so real it's such a I love good that movie, show man. <laughs> such a good movie and the show was really good oh man oh Mr. Robot that's something What? I love the cars. The cars in iRobot and the cars in like fucking Minority Report too. Ooh. Like they're all like so fucking controlled by AI and stuff. Like that you gotta really go through awful. all these different things just to like take over driving it all. <laughs> it's completely off topic with the only connection really being like Will Smith. Did you hear that I Am Legend is getting the sequel? Oh well, shit. I did hear time? that. Movie. That's wild. Ah. And still with Will Smith, then maybe maybe the movie industry isn't cooked like we thought. Maybe, but it might be cooked. It did it, 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 it something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing is, they they told him he cannot slap anybody in the oh, whole film. God, not allowed. That no a deal breaker for me. Movie. That's an absolute deal breaker. <laughs> Every yeah. dog the, in this fir- needs to survive the first scene is just him slapping the shit out of somebody, <laughs> and then they move on real quick. <laughs> makes Get me think that of, out of the way. Makes me think of the abusive father in South Park, where he's like, "I'm slap happy, slap, slap, slap." All the fathers abusive in South Park. <laughs> I don't even know. It's South Park. South Park's <laughs> crazy. Much. Yeah, um, I mean, fuck. Circling back to what we were saying before, Forrest, what do you think uh, we can expect on the whole as a for the D and D community from upcoming developments? Um, gosh, I mean, I think that there's going to be a big lean into the uh, mixed reality thing, you know. Mm. Um. A lot of 
a lot of push towards that just because of you know the apple vision pro obviously which the apple vision pro from what i understand it's not geared towards gaming like at all you know it's it's totally meant to be this like work space efficiency thing somebody who already has an iphone they already have an iMac, they already have Apple products in their life. And then that one product brings all of those things right in front of you in like, and a movie theater and all the other, you know, whatever, yeah. move the screens around that type of stuff. Uh, so great for, for working, not meant for gaming at all. Like the other gaming headsets that we have now. I, like Quest and shit. I feel like what we could really see come out of all of this is like some kind of uh, peripheral, like a some a hub that is more made for the heavy processing, right? And like, uh, ev- like say everybody at your table has one of these little uh, AR headset, whatever, like a your Apple Glass, Google Glass, whatever you wanted to call it, and one person has a device, and it pr- everybody has to just simply connect. You press a button. You connect to the little lobby uh, with this device that has all the processing power, and now you're all standing around looking at the same thing. Cause... Dude, your little your mini is like your amiibo. Yes, like, yes. Oh like that, yeah, right? it's it's kind of like Wizard's Chess. <laughs> no, I think that is a is a great thing, you know. But probably what I would see that as being is more of like some open source like fan made project type stuff because i feel like all the other shit is going to be going towards the cloud and Mm. so like you said you've got a really lightweight piece of technology that's basically just the screen and stuff Mm. um it's not doing any of the heavy lifting everything's subscription based everything's cloud based and they got some super computer with fucking servers and shit that's hosting all this stuff um but yeah, I can't. I can imagine there being local instances of that as well. You know, you just got to like, run it on your computer, and everybody's got a set of goggles. Yeah, it's and, card games where you could have like the glasses like connect to the to the cards or whatever, and then you can play a card on this mat, and then like a little holographic like image comes up. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, like Yu-Gi-Oh when they would play. It's like it. Skylanders, kind of. Yeah, no, like, Skylanders fucking, be crazy. Yeah, that shit is really cool, and I, I think it was ahead Skylanders. of its time. And you know, and that Disney Infinity or whatever the yeah. fuck, yeah, that, all that I shit is Skylanders. wicked. <laughs> to be able to bring your fucking your figure to life, you know, that's yeah. so cool. I, I mean, the, do that with your the, uh, the 3ds did a lot of stuff with. AR cards. You could put the little AR card yeah, on the table, like and exactly that was the anchoring point. Yeah, it just anchors yeah. the the little like mixed reality thing for you. And like, mm. what is it? Bakugan kind of did the same thing with the cards. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I could imagine like maybe if you just have like a AR play mat, like you were yeah. saying, and like this is your D, this is your uh, you know your D and D mat. You roll it out. Mm-hmm. Onto the table, Dude, you know what, and you have a you little USB, and plug it right whatever, in your laptop. Yeah, whatever symbols are on there, just like anchor the whole experience. To you remember that game. episode of uh, Adventure Time when they were playing Card Wars? Yeah, I'm picturing it exactly like that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Seriously. Yeah, it'll be like that, and everyone will have a fucking scouter on their head. Oh, that'd be so cool! It'd be like a dual disc, but like a little scout. <laughs> For real. Hell yeah! Yeah, I know someone is going to make dual discs a reality time. now. Because oh, absolutely! You're, you're going to see it in ten years. Trust and believe. If we don't have dual discs in ten years, then the uh, we're only going downhill. Yeah. What's the point of tech if you can't have a dual disc? Honestly, right? Yeah, I really I want a PET. You know, I think everybody should have a little like. AI assistant that also has yeah, stats. A little Mega Man. Kick your friends. Oh, a little Mega Man, yeah. <laughs> Jack in. Oh my god. I want a little Astro Boy. <laughs> have, your, want... have your Mega Man Ooh. be your character for a game. Oh my god. I don't want an AI assistant unless it can definitely kick somebody else's AI I can't have fast. an AI that, like my Digimon. I don't want it. <laughs> 
Well, that's one of the the next things I I would imagine would come up at some point. Digimon. <laughs> There's a demand Digimon for Digimon for real, for real. <laughs> yeah, I'm demanding it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that, I think that we've pretty much uh, covered everything this week. Forrest, right, well, thanks for having me on the show, show guys. Oh, absolutely. Cool. You're always welcome back. It is good to be back. And your little Definitely. bird, too. <laughs> and your little bird, too. <laughs> Don't forget to bring the bird, yeah. 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 You leave without the bird, you might as well not show up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> tweet, tweet. All right. Well, everyone, this has been Dungeons and Talk Shows. Been great being with everyone tonight. Even if we've had a less than stellar performance with the stream, it's been it's been a time. <laughs> the conversation is just as all over the place as always. Hmm. We need one last terrifying idea to leave people with for their game, Sam. What you think? <sighs> You know, last week we suggested that you have a player get pulled in through a shadow <laughs> by a frog creature. Through, have them get pulled through a mirror this time. You know? Yep. Or literally any reflective surface. You're using silverware? Too bad. Uh, uh, that's like, I love the concept of that as like a house of mirrors thing. Like maybe oh, the fetch God. just like pops out, pulls you into the mirror. The, yeah, the, your party gets lured into like a house full of mirrors or like what the fuck and then all of a sudden like they can't find the door out and it just fetches like oh yeah that could get so confusing so fast like the reflection inside a spoon yeah, how it's like upside like, down fucking with you now no, everything's man. inverted yeah you try like, to move ooh. left you move right you you do a lot of psychological torture with your player yeah too. like huh that's weird where's perry you could also have them kind of like, uh, you know, face their own inner demons type of scenario. Yeah. You got to fight Nega version of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the Nega chin. Yeah, like Nega Scott, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're putting a lot of emphasis in. This is a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll have a great weekend Bye. where did i put the button and there it is see you, everybody <laughs>